Well, hey there, everyone. So this week, I'm going to be doing a cute little project. So a bit ago, I had picked up this bed sheet that I completely forgot about until I was organizing my material like two days ago. And so I remembered what I was going to do with it. And that became my project for this week. So for what that is, um, I had found a Star Wars bed sheet and that's like the perfect thing to make a dress out of. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. So I figured I could also kind of make this like a, like a what I would wear to Disneyland kind of video. Not that I'm planning on going to Disneyland anytime soon, um, but if I were, this is what I would wear. So that kind of inspires what I wanted to do with this dress because normally what I would do is the same dress I've done at least like a thousand times, which is a big poofy skirt, uh, elastic bag, big poofy sleeves. Um, but I figured if I were to actually wear this to Disneyland, it wouldn't be the most comfortable thing to wear. So I kind of wanted to make a dress that would work if I wanted to wear it to Disneyland. So that means comfortable, flexible, long enough so it's not like revealing in the wind or whatever. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going for. And then since it is going to be like Disneyland outfit inspired, I'm also going to take the same material and make Mickey ears. Um, so I will show you the process of all of that as well. So for the pattern, um, I used, I'll show it somewhere, this pattern, which is actually one of the first patterns that I ever bought um, and the first dress that I ever made. So I'm just going to be using the bodice pattern for that and the arms, but I'm going to adjust it a little bit because I remember when I was making it at the very beginning of this journey, um, the back was really long. So the front goes up and then the back goes like really far down. Um, and I remember really hating that, so I'm going to adjust the front and back. Um, and then, so I'll be using that, and then I'll be using the sleeve. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to cut out that front panel and the back panel. And then the first step for the bodice is to sew the darts on each side of the front bodice piece. And then once I do that, I can take the back bodice piece and sew it together to the front bodice piece down the sides and on the arm piece. So I'm gonna catch you after all that. So for the skirt, I ended up cutting out four panels, but I only ended up using two. So that's basically what you see me doing here. And then for the bodice, the first step is to put the two darts into the front bodice piece. And then you connect the back bodice piece to the front bodice piece, sewing it together at the size and the shoulder. And I did do a zigzag stitch to close up all of the exposed edges. Now, since this bodice doesn't have a lining or anything, it actually gets a bias tape that I make out of the same material sewn all the way around the neckline. So once I make that, I make my own bias tape with the material, sew it on, 
um, and then I can move on to the arms. So pretty much that's also fairly simple. So you just take the arms and sew it together down that little side. And then instead of doing a gather stitch for the sleeve, it has me pleat it. Um, it gives me specific places that I'm supposed to mark out to pleat it, but I'm not gonna do that. So I'm just going to roughly pin it to my bodice right sides together um, with three pleats that I kind of randomly placed and hoping it worked out um, and that's <laughs> that for the sleeve and then I'll just hem it and the bodice is pretty much done. So I'm gonna see you after all that to talk about the skirt. Now to make the bias tape for the neck, basically you just take a strip and then you fold in both the edges and then fold it in half and then that gets sandwiched around the entire neckline and sewn. Now for the sleeves, you're going to fold it right sides together and sew it down that little line. And then this gets pinned right sides to the bodice while making little pleats to make it fit the armhole. and then the sleeve gets hemmed. So for the skirt, I am going to be putting in pockets. I almost didn't because I was a little frustrated with this project, um, but inevitably I did because I've been trying to make myself put pockets in things and not skip steps to do things. <laughs> so um, the skirt is just two panels that I'm gonna gather. So again, for the pocket, I'm going to take, I'm gonna take two of my pocket pieces and place them right sides together, three inches down from the top on each side of the skirt and sew that, then I'll iron them out and then I'll pin the skirts right sides together and then sew down around the pocket and then down the rest of the way. Once that's done, I just put some basting stitches around the top and then I could gather it to the same size of the bodice. Then from there, the bodice just gets pinned right sides together to the skirt and then the skirt gets hemmed. Also as a last step for the dress, I decided on adding some ties in. So I kind of wanted to incorporate some black, some black for this dress. So I just cut out some black strips from a pillowcase that I thrifted. Um, and I made some straps so that I could tie the dress in the back and make it just a little bit more form-fitting um, because I wasn't liking the look of the completely loose dress. So after I did that, then we can move on to the headband. Now for the pockets, you just want to make a generic pocket shape and then cut out four of those. Then that gets pinned three inches down from the top on both sides of the skirt, right sides together. Once you iron the pocket out, you can then pin the two skirts together, sewing down around the pocket and then down the rest of the way. Thank you. 
and then I did go back and zigzag all of the edges including the pocket. Then a basting stitch gets put around the entire top of the skirt so that we can gather it to be the same size as the top. Once it's gathered to be the same size as the bodice, then just pin it right sides together and sew all the way around. After that, then the skirt gets hemmed. And then to make the straps for the back, I just cut out two strips and then I fold those in half and sew all the way down and then turn it right sides out. Then it just gets pinned straight onto the back because when it's tied you won't be able to see that exposed edge and so this dress is done. Alright, now that the dress is done, we can move on to the Mickey ears. So I had purchased a large amount of just generic black headbands from Amazon um, because it's kind of hard to find just a regular headband in store and I could just use these for whatever I need. So I just got like a big pack of like black headbands. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get the circle size for your Mickey ears. Um, you'll see that I use a bowl, but then I kind of decided the, the bowl was a little too big. So I kind of sized that down a little bit and then you want to add a little, little divot in the bottom and that's where the Mickey ears are gonna be sitting on the headband. So you'll see me do that. And don't forget to add seam allowance. And then once I do that, I'm going to basically just pick out the little parts of the fabric that I like. So there's like the word Star Wars. I definitely wanted that as two of the ears and then just some like random um, like TIE Fighters and X-Wings, so I just kind of picked out what I wanted and you need four panels for that. Once you have your panels, you're going to place them right sides together for whatever you want the front and the back of the ears to look like, and then you're just going to sew all the way around except for that little bottom divot, and then turn it right sides out after clipping all of the corners. So I'm going to see you after that. Now for the Mickey ears, you just kind of make a circle, and then I ended up using a the headband to get that little notch so that it would fit correctly when I put them on to the headband. And then you just place the circle where you want the pattern to be and what you want on your Mickey ears and cut out four of those. Then they get pinned right sides together depending on what you want the front and the back of your two ears to look like.
Once it's sewn all the way around except for the bottom, you clip all of the curves and then turn it right sides out. All right, now that we have our little ears, it is time to fill them. So to keep them sturdy, I took a foam piece and I traced out my ear on that. So I cut it out of that and then you just kind of stuff it on in the ear. And then you'll take fluff stuffing and you'll stuff both sides of the ear to give it that little plush look that the Disney ears always have. And then from there, I just kind of like very crappily folded over the bottom opening of the ear and hot glued that and then folded over, over the other flap and hot glued that and it was closed. <laughs> and then the ears could also get hot glued on to the headband. So this is something that I keep forgetting that I have to do is when you have the headband on, it goes from this to this. So your ears will go from like here to here. So you have to like make sure you put them low enough so that when you put it on your head, it doesn't look like they're sticking straight up. They're still like out like Mickey ears. So just be mindful of that placement. So then the last thing to do is the bow. So for the bow, you're gonna cut out a rectangle. I did um, 11 by 13. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a hot glue strip and put it down the middle, fold in one end, and then another hot glue strip down the middle and fold in the other end. And then you're going to do another hot glue strip down this middle and fold that in, and then another hot glue strip down this middle and fold that in. So then from there, you can like accordion fold the bow so it looks like a little bow. And then for the little middle strap, you're going to cut out just like a strip and then hot glue down the middle, fold that in, hot glue down the middle, fold that in. And then you can take that little strip and wrap it around the bow, cut off the excess, glue it down, and then you can glue the bow straight into the center of the headband. So from there, we are done and we are ready for the final look. From there, I ended up taking some EVA foam and I just traced out the size of my Mickey ears and then I could just stuff it into the circle and that gives it some stability. Once that's done, then I go ahead and put stuffing on both sides of that foam piece. Then I just glue the remaining fabric at the bottom down to close off everything. After that, you can go ahead and hot glue the ears straight on to the headband. Now for the bow, I cut out an 11 by 13 rectangle. You just need one of those. And then just a little strip for the fabric that'll go in the middle of the bow. And then for the bow, you're going to put a line of hot glue down the middle and then fold in that one side. Then do another line of hot glue and fold in the other side. 
And now we're gonna put a hot glue down the center middle and then fold in that side and another hot glue strip down that middle and fold in that side. Now for the little strip, we're gonna do a similar thing to the bow where we're gonna put a hot glue strip down the middle, fold in that side, and then another hot glue strip down that middle and fold in the other side. From there, this can be accordion folded into a little bow shape. Then that little strip gets hot glued on to the middle of the bow. Then you can wrap it and cut off the excess and then the bow can be glued straight onto the headband and we are ready for the final look. I think this turned out so cute. Um, I love the pattern of the sheet. It's just like perfect. Um, the ears turned out really well. I think that's my favorite part. Um, I had made a pair of Mickey ears before, but they turned out to be really heavy because of the method that I tried to do to make them. Um, so I actually like this method a lot more just because they feel a lot lighter um, and a lot less gluing compared to what I did before. <laughs> so these turned out really good. Um, if I would do anything different, I would say to make the little Mickey ears a little bit bigger and then space them in just a teensy bit more. Um, but but like the bow turned out really good um it's staying on really well i think that turned out fantastically um the dress is very comfortable i'm really glad i added the tie in the back because before it just kind of was meh but now that it's a little bit more form-fitting uh i like it a lot more the only thing about this dress is that the neckline turned out a little wonky because as soon as i put on the bias tape it was gaping in weird places and i tried to fix it with some little darts here um but i feel like it could have been better but no one's really gonna tell or be able to tell so that's not really the biggest of issue um it fits comfortably i think this would be a great thing to wear to disneyland especially since it's long enough to hide the length of my bike shorts so i don't chafe <laughs> and then especially with my little <laughs> lounge fly backpack that my best friend got me for christmas um which is pretty much the um key thing that people wear to disneyland so i think that's a cute little addition it even though it's lord of the rings um got a little, the door opens and gandalf and frodo are there um <laughs> even though it's lord of the rings i think it still fits really well it just looks really cute with the dress yeah i think this would be more probably more of like a walking around kind of kind of day rather than a heavy rides kind of day i could still wear this on a ride um but i think i'd be more comfortable wearing like shorts or something so this is definitely a good like walk around go see the new like star wars i forgot what it's called star wars land um kind of deal and just see what they have go eat some food whatnot so if i do go to star or star wars to disneyland in the future which i hope at some point i will although it's just become crazy expensive and overcrowded and full of children and it's hot 
Um, so maybe <laughs> at one point I will. Um, I will hope to wear this dress at least one of the days if I do go multiple days. Um, and we'll see how that goes. My best friend really, really wants us to go. I had made her, the ears that I made before were for her, and I made them Winnie the Pooh themed. So, and I'm planning on making her a matching Winnie the Pooh dress. So imagine how cute we would look with our respective outfits in front of the castle. So yeah, I think this is a great option to make and wear if you are planning on going to Disneyland and in, at any point in the future. Um, I just love making and I've like loved seeing videos of people that make their own things or do like Disney bounds or anything. I just think it's really a fun element while you're going to this to a theme park to kind of like dress it up a little bit. So might as well try out something like this that worked pretty well by the way if the ears were a little hard to understand me making i did just get like a compilation of the instructions from tiktok so i'm sure if you look up uh mickey mouse ear tutorial you'll find a bunch of really good ones um especially for the bow so that's also a good resource to use because i probably don't explain it super well um but you see how i did it also, I have a little announcement. So, I have recently picked up streaming on Twitch. Um, very small. I'm basically just doing it for fun. I'm really not hoping to get much out of it. I honestly just want to play games on there and talk to my friends and see anybody else who would like to join. So, just so you know, I am streaming on Twitch now. I'm trying to keep it to at least for now, to just streaming on Fridays at six o'clock, six to eight or nine, depending how I'm like feeling for the game. So if I do in the future, I will um, hopefully post the announcement on my YouTube for an announcement. Um, I don't have Twitter, I deleted that a bit ago, and then maybe my Insta story. So anybody who would like to join those, you are more than welcome. I will link my Twitch down in the description. Um, and I'm hoping once I get all the technical things figured out, I'm hoping to edit the streams together and then post them on Wednesdays. Um, but that's still up in the air because the first stream that I did last Friday, um, I had a bit of technical difficulties to say the least um like the mic sounded weird in the recording but apparently to everybody else it sounded normal so i need to figure out why the sound is weird before i post that little like compiled video of the game so eventually i'm hoping to post the little video on wednesdays as well as my normal content on saturdays so don't you worry i won't be slacking on sewing or crafting i'm just adding a little game element to it but yeah, I hope to see you all over there. If if you want to hang out, chat with me, please, because I need something to talk about while I'm streaming um, because I'm awkward. So if you want to hang out, then go ahead and hang out. Um, I'm currently playing Song of Horror, so it's a little bit of a spooky game. I kind of want to stick to some spooky games for now. Um, yeah, come hang out if you'd like. Aside from that, I hope you liked the video that I did this week. Let me know what you want to see more of. I am down for all suggestions. So, anywho to do, if you like what I did, go and like and subscribe. I post most Saturdays, mostly at noon, and I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching!